Hello, everybody. Welcome to our hot seat session. I think we're going to give it just one minute, let people filter in the classic letting people filter in. You know, they're not filtering in physically anywhere, they're just getting onto their computers energetically. <laughs> yeah. Hello, hello. Hey, Richmond. Oh, from Panama. I love the. Hey, I've done these most fascinating places. I know, yeah. Cool. Today's oh, going to be awesome. CRM focused. So I'm curious. I always love to know, like, what tools are people already using for their yeah. CRM? I'm going to add that as a poll question. Uh, hey, Kendall, you're welcome. All over the world. Love it. Wow. Awesome. Well, let's jump in and people can kind of filter in as, as they do. Um, awesome. Welcome to Notion's hot seat session with Marie uh, Poulin and Ben as well. Um, this is our, you know, I think our fourth or third, third session. Um, and really the goal of a hot seat session here is to be as informal as possible, really work with a founder, in this case, Jay. Um, <laughs> yeah, hey, Jay. And uh, really go through their use case, what they're trying to solve in Notion, all those nuances that you're trying to figure out, the challenges that you face in adopting Notion, using it for a use case. And um, it's meant to be very much live, ask any questions that you have, um, and we'll try to answer them as best as possible. Um, Marie is probably the most knowledgeable Notion user we have, as well as Ben. And um, I, I, it's not just me saying that, our founder has said that. So. Um, <laughs> It's definitely a big endorsement and and and, and we love marie here um and who am i i'm a waste i work on smbs and startups at notion um and i've just been super happy to work on this as an initiative um and uh, yeah with that i'm gonna pass it to jay jay's the founder of hot swap hot swap uh basically makes it super easy for you to migrate your data from a tool you're using to another tool that you might want to use especially alternatives um, and uh, definitely solving a real painful problem for a lot of teams. Um, and with that, I'll pass it to Jay, talk about your use case, your company that you're building and, and would love to learn more. Awesome. Well, really appreciate you all having me. Um, yeah, my name is Jay and, and I'm the co-founder of a company and we specialize in vendor migrations. We make it really easy for companies to help move their customers' data off of a competing product and, and onto their own. And as we've made progress on our company over the past few months, we have been having more customer calls. We've been doing more customer outreach. We've been scheduling more demos. And we found that cobbling together Google Sheets, Google Documents, and our email hasn't really been the most organized for us We've been dropping calls on the ground. Um, we're not following up as much as, as we wanted to. So my co-founder and I have started using Notion to just keep our business more organized um, and you know, really very curious to learn how we can just use Notion, which we're already using for other kinds of documentation and project management, um, to just keep better track of, of all of our customer calls and, and so on between my co-founder and I. Cool. Excited to help you improve this process. So uh, I can dive in and do a bit of a screen share. So Jay has given me access to his workspace. So we're going to set up a little bit of a sales CRM and we're going to see how far we can take this build today. So let me just share my screen here. You can see this okay. We've got a little outreach page here. Awesome, cool. And uh, Jay, I will be relying on you to kind of guide me through pieces of this build. But one of the first things that I did, uh, knowing that, again, we're going to use a CRM as our use case, Notion has a ton of pre-made templates here. So I actually just used Notion's straight up sales CRM as a starting point here. It's got a little bit of test data in here, a couple test properties. And again, we can use this just as our starting point, even if a lot of these need to change. So just to reiterate here go to templates sales sales crm lots of good stuff in there to start with no need to start from scratch we can edit as we go uh so jay walk me through a little bit because obviously every company is a little bit different but your specific 
process that you go through with your co-founder. I'm just going to take a couple of notes as you talk. I think it's really good before people even get into Notion, like just outline bullet points in text. What is your flow? Uh, what are the tools that you use? Kind of what's your process for your outreach? Yeah, um, that's a really good question. Um, as though we have a specific process that never <laughs> changes on a week by week basis. The first thing that we that we try to do is identify companies who we think would be a really good fit for our product. So we're going into LinkedIn or using tools like Apollo um, to identify companies at the right size, the right growth stage, who are um, who are selling technical products. My co-founder and I split up that work of, of going out into the world and trying to identify them. And then we basically make a list of those companies and, and their LinkedIn profiles. LinkedIn's What's, your primary channel that you're that you're doing that search. Yeah, LinkedIn or, or Apollo for now. Okay. Once we have a list of companies that we think would be a good fit, then we got to figure out who we want to try and reach out to from within those companies. So is it uh, a customer success manager? Uh, you know, someone who's responsible for doing a lot of manual copy and pasting? Um, is it an engineering leader? Uh, maybe someone who's already maintaining some uh, migration software for the team. Uh, so that is, I think, the next thing that we do once we generate those companies. Awesome. So what I'm going to do here for anyone that is not familiar with this, but any database in Notion, you can copy and paste the link to. So I'm going to copy this link to this database and I'm just going to paste it right here inside of this page. So that way we can make notes and be working with the database in the same page. And then you can always delete any of those notes later, but it allows us a little bit more flexibility. So I'm going to make this full width and I'm just going to paste the database here, create linked database. All right. So it's just pulling in a really simple table, but we're going to make this probably more of a board style view. I think is going to make a lot more sense for you, maybe even dividing this up by team member. So yourself and your co-founder, and you can each see your different people in different stages. So um, that's a good start. I know one of the things you mentioned was you do have some email scripts that you use. So mm -hmm. maybe even baking in those email scripts into the CRM as part of a template. So we've got this new customer our new prospect here. So maybe this might be a good place to actually have that script kind of ready to go. So even as soon as you're opening this up, you're in LinkedIn, maybe in one window, you got your Notion open up in another window and you're, you know, uh, before you do your call, all of their data is is right there with you. So that's, that's one thing we could do is build up this template here. Um, once we have that list of people who we plan to outreach, then we actually do the outreach. So my co-founder and I will both, you know, if we have mutual connections, then then we will, you know, split it up that way. Um, uh, and 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 that's like the, the the part of our of our process that we're spending the most time on today, or the place where we're trying to get the most organized. And what's uh, tell me a little bit more about what the outreach looks like. So is it a phone call? Is it a live demo like, you know, Zoom, that sort of thing? What are you doing to actually uh, schedule it as well? Like, are you using a booking calendar link or something like that? Yeah. So, um, you know, if, if someone is interested in then then we try to schedule um, just an initial discovery call, learn more about their pain points, um, learn how they're solving the problem today or, or if they're solving this today. Uh, and we'll use a combination of Calendly. Um, I've been using a calendar app called Cron um, to help uh, uh, you know create scheduling links, or or just plain Google calendars, um, you know, depending on on what they're they're using. Gotcha. That initial, and, oh yeah. No, no, go ahead. On that initial call, it's that that's really just a conversation. I'm asking a lot of questions and taking a ton of notes. Um, and, uh, you know, we're not doing live demos usually on that call, but we're really just doing, you know, uh, like discovery and fact gathering. Awesome. And have you been keeping those notes loose? Are you using this sort of meeting notes? I won't <laughs> click into any of these other pages yet, but kind of, it's okay if it's messy, but what's the process been currently for that? Yeah. So we started using a, a folder in Google Drive and we'd have a different document for every conversation. That was becoming really cumbersome. Uh, so right now what I do, and it's not great, 
is I just use the Apple Notes app on my desktop because it's, it's right there and it's fast. Um, however, this is a problem because then my co-founder is not able to catch up on the conversations. Yes. So that's why we're like trying to find something that's a little bit easier to use than Google Drive um, in, or, in order for us to share. Need something that's not just a, <laughs> not just a folder. Yeah. Notes. Okay, great. Um, I'm just writing these more for myself. Okay, schedule your initial discovery call. Use Calendly link. Take a ton of notes on that. Uh, one of the things I'm wondering is if what you need a separate notes database, or we can just uh, include some of that notes in the body of this entry. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming we will want to kind of attach this so that you, your co-founder, or hypothetically in the future, as you guys grow and you hire, you know, someone uh -huh. else maybe to be doing these sales calls, that someone could open this and really see a history of that person and kind of know when was the last contact, what were some of the notes you added. Uh, and I imagine you're going to notice a lot of trends over time too. Like you're having these customer calls uh, and you're probably noticing, oh, there's these tools that, that people are frequently mentioning. So I imagine we probably want to add, um, I want to add whether that's a drop down or a linked database we could link to if you already have a tools database where you're kind of tracking notes on some of those tools that could be a good use case for us using a linked database um, don't know if you have it in your space already i could set up that link for you or we could just kind of use a uh, multi-select in the meantime that makes a lot of sense um one of the things that's painful right now is even though i have a folder full of notes uh you know it, I don't have a, a great way of, of, of documenting the common themes that I see uh, across many calls. So if there was a way that we do that uh, so I can make it obvious, uh, then that would be really cool. And I'm going to, some of this will be very, very rough and ready, but uh, you can always rename any of this stuff. But I might even have, whether it's a trends, observation, something like that, where it's like um, customer struggles with. Google Doc, you know, something like that, um, where you could keep all of these in a running list. And then you might even say um, high, low, medium pain. Like, how strong is that pain for someone? If you're hearing people complain about the same stuff over and over again, it's very frustrating. We could almost give like a status or a, or a rating to that and link that up to the customer, too. So it's like we notice like 80 percent of our people are always mentioning Google Docs or they're always mentioning this. So that might be a, a way we can create the connection between these two, which could uh, open up some interesting opportunities for roll ups and some other formulas and things like that. Sure. I think another way of describing pain is dollar value. So sometimes customers are paying consultant hundreds of dollars. Yes. Um, and, you know, again, our pitches we go in and we, we help automate that process. So um, maybe that's also related to now that I'm thinking about it the size of the opportunity? Yes, absolutely. So I just created a relation between the two. So let's say, you know, you're talking to Mary. And again, this can be something where if the properties are set up correctly and you've got this document open, you favorite it, you open it as a page, and it's like just there as you're talking and taking notes, you could easily just be like, oh, yeah, she mentioned the Google Doc. She mentioned this. She mentioned this. You can be like checking those boxes because you've already kind of pre-populated that a little bit. Uh, and then that gives a record, right? You can see. Um, how many pain points you could even, um, just as another way to show what you can do with uh, roll-ups a little bit. So if this is tech, we could say, let's turn this into a multi-select and we'll say this is, uh, sorry, Google, to pick on uh, pick on you today. <laughs> but what we can do too is as you're, you're uh, storing the pain and the notes about that as you go along, I'm just going to make a little roll-up here so that we can automatically pull in the tech that goes along with that. So you'll see a roll up of all the different pieces of tech as you kind of click on those panes. So that's one interesting way that you could kind of be doing this more rapidly and you're not like manually typing out Google Docs, you know, that sort of thing. So this might speed things up a little bit, um, just as a sample, just based on on the limited uh, information that you gave me there. So I would, I would set up some of these panes or like trends or, you know, opportunities, however you want to word it. It could even be, uh, type is pain or type is opportunity, right? So that might even be a separate field. So maybe you want to keep all of like pains and gains kind of in one table as well. That could be a really interesting thing too. And then you could also uh, do a board view of this to show by tech, show by uh, pain or gain, you know, lots of different ways that you could uh, arrange that information. Got it. Awesome. Uh, 
Krista was saying, you could even add the number of times you've seen a pain point exactly. So you can do uh, roll ups of pain points and uh, calculate them, sum them, and just be like, oh, wow, this is, let's sort this by frequency. And then you're going to see those at the top. And it's just, it's going to be so clear for you what is your next kind of feature or your next opportunities are the people that are using those uh, lists of tech. So that's, and this is another reason too why I like to use one page while I'm doing these build outs. So you've got your notes kind of messy at the top, bring in the core database there, and then you might start building out different databases in the same page and we can restructure them and reorganize them, but it's a lot easier than to kind of jump around in different pages in your space. So we're just gonna bring it all in here. It might feel a little bit messy while we're working on it. Then you can always kind of resort and move them where they need to go. So let's, let's make sure that these other properties too are more useful for you, right? So we got the panes is, is one thing to connect. Um, status, I don't know if this is super accurate, right? Like, do you have a different, like, reached out on LinkedIn? Like, do we want to get a little bit more specific about the actual steps that you take with these folks? I think that would be helpful. Yeah. So I think our steps would be, let me, let me think. I'm, I'm trying to take this, like, ad hoc process and turn it into something that is, is you know is a little bit more formal um yeah like does everyone kind of start start in lead they get added to lead or in no status right and then you're right. kind of qualifying is there a qualification process like how do you decide if someone is a lead so all right let me think so by the time we are ready to like put down uh put down a lead within our system, we've done some qualification. Like they meet certain criteria in terms of their size or their industry. So the next step then is, have we reached out to that customer? No, sorry, once we've identified the company, then we have to identify the person within the company. Once we've found the person with the company, then we need to reach out to them. Once we reach out to them, then we schedule the call. And then once we have the call, then we get that information about what is their pain, what are they doing today, and so on. Hey, Marie, given that, given that we now have this ability to group by relation, it might make sense to make the statuses a relation. Um, and then basically your, your system becomes self-documenting. So you could create pages like uh, lead qualification that could be a page and there could be a description in that page of the process so that you know if jay say were to bring on a sales manager that person could be like okay i'm i'm qualifying the lead here are the steps that i typically take for qualifying the lead and that might even be a that might even be a separate database that's like you know you create a template to qualify the lead it shows you the steps you go through them and you da 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 da, da. you can take notes along the way so that you have that like historical record of all the steps taken for that one specific client um, the other thing i think might be missing here is um i know that jay's going to talk about some other stuff that's related in the in later in the call but um having a calendar that shows when these actions were taken so that we're not just limited to a single date um on the on the contact like the last last step so it might be you know you could roll up through the calendar dates and say like show me the latest date and that would give you an insight into the last action that was taken with that customer um last edited or mm -hmm. and i think there's another version of that which is who took that action like was it myself or was it my co-founder um, right so we can catch up with you yeah let's add a last edited by property And then maybe even, yeah, last, last edited time. I always forget to name it first, last edited. Okay, cool. Great, Mary is coming along for the ride. Uh, connected up companies too. Like I do think uh, you had a big list in your sheets of all the different companies. So that could be something you could export as a CSV, import into here and actually have a list of companies um, mm -hmm. and then companies and their key contacts. Right. So there might be multiple contacts associated with a company. Um, you might even want to add some notes here, like why is this company a good fit? Uh, maybe even a direct link to LinkedIn profile and all that stuff. Any notes you could also roll up from the contact here as well. So I think having a contact or companies, you know, separate from your uh, your actual individuals will be really helpful here. And then 
And so Ben, what, in terms of the status, are you thinking we should build these out as like qualified, you know, lead, whatnot? Yeah, so so I, I think you just asked Jay, like, what's the process look like for qualifying a lead? And he's like, oh yeah, you do this, wait, no, then you do this. So it would be great to have that that actual grouping right there so that you know anybody can look at it and make sure that we're all following the same process and that kind of thing so yeah there you go you make a status and then within that qualified page you could you could write the description of what what we do at the company to um so this is like sort of building documentation into the process a little bit Right. Um, and I mean, this is definitely a, a little bit of a, a more advanced use case. So some folks may not know about this, but the now that you can group by relation, it opens up a lot of possibilities here. So let's say, for example, um, we will connect Mary to this new status that we've created. Let's say Mary is qualified. What we're doing here is instead of um, instead of using a dropdown for a status, we're actually using a, and I'm going to leave both just to kind of show you those options, right? So you can actually choose qualified uh, as a status uh, single select or status as a relation. Um, mm -hmm. By doing it by relation, you can actually click in here and say, oh right, what are the what's the criteria here? You know. And you can have a whole list of, of things right in here to make sure that they are qualified. And then that way you have a list here of all the people that are in that stage of, of the journey. And I imagine you could go even further and have a, you know, have steps, a steps database that has like a qualification template in it. And so when Mary sure. gets moved to qualified, you could add a, a steps template in there that, you know, she, you could then check off those steps so that you have a, a a usable list instead of just a description of the process. I see. Right. So you're saying that when I have a new lead, then then I get a checklist and I can make sure that I go through all of the steps that are required in order to 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 qualify someone. Right. Got it. Yeah. So the simplest version of that, I think, would be to just create a template in the customer itself, I guess, that you know, that you could update. Which is, looks like what Marie's already doing. Whenever you make a new one here, the status will be uh, qualified here. Qualified here again. I'll just I'll leave these two statuses till we figure out which which one is sort of the right approach. Uh, but that way, anytime we make let's say uh, make a new person here, if I open this up and click on the template new qualified customer, you can see it automatically is going to adjust that status here. And now I can see Ben is here. Um, but then of course, we want to have all the correct, you know, I think we can build this out to be a little bit better, not just background info and history of interactions, but we could actually uh, build a proper template for this and have it be a bit more usable. Have your scripts in there. And again, uh, you can double check here, any things that need to be in there. Okay. Now, one of the things you mentioned, obviously, is that you and your co-founder are doing this together. So we definitely mm -hmm. want to assign sort of a primary contact to these as well, if yeah. we haven't already. So I think you've got account owner, which is great. And so let's, if I assign that to you here, on a couple of these. Uh, yeah, let's assign both of those to you. Um, but so now Notion's new grouping feature, which I'm so excited about, allows you to uh, do a board view and then subgroup it. And so I think we should do a subgroup by your, you and your, your co-founder, so account owner. So uh, then this again, right, allows anyone that hasn't been assigned will show up in this process here. Anyone that has been assigned will show up here. Now let's change this one to your co-founder say, ah, I don't want to deal with this guy. I'm going to mm -hmm. <laughs> assign it to, to Len. And now you'll see that this has opened up here a new uh, board view here. And if we want to, we can collapse some of these properties. Like maybe you don't need to see every single you know piece of information about this, this person. Maybe you just want to see their uh, latest, you know, when they were last, uh, last contacted, maybe the company name or something like that. Uh, and maybe the company name might hide and we'll change it to be the uh, related company data. 
Don't really need the account owner since it's grouped by them now. Yep, good call, good call on that. Hide account owner, great. And you can start to you know condense this because if you've got a whole bunch of leads, it might it might seem really uh, big. But this is also another case where you might want to have a different sales CRM on your own page, and you could actually filter this to say just show me mine, or just show me you know all of ours, and that way you, you guys can kind of compare. But you should be able to then do some some roll ups there, and you'll be able to see okay, I've got one person, Len's got one right now. How many are in this? this board view over here and you can you'll be able to start to see like okay how are we each uh, you so know, that, performing right? yeah so that's a question that i that i was going to ask and, and where like is it possible for us to like have like a friendly competition right and sort of see week over week, like <laughs> yeah like who which of us is bringing in more business for the company basically yeah i think I mean, there's so many ways that, that you could get playful with this, but um, I might, let's duplicate this one that we've got, which is um, status by, you know, team member. And then let's let's make another one. We can play with this a little bit. It's always easier to duplicate a view if you, if you like your status by team member. Um, I'm just gonna say weekly. And so obviously this will this will look a lot better uh, if there's more data in there too. And I don't know if you want to even add a couple like test names while we're doing this too, just to kind of fill it out a little bit. Um, but what I'll do is say add a filter here. And so I think what we could do is just say um, last contact. I think last contact is probably the best one to do or last edited is within the last week, something like that. I, I would I would suggest adding a, a probably a closed field, like a date that yeah. indicates when they were closed. And that way you can see, show me all the closed in the last week, rolling week by by team member. Yeah, let's see, closed the date property. And yeah, you could really you could automate that a lot too with something like automate.io. That way, when uh, you know some uh, the status is changed to close, you could have an automation that automatically sets the close date, um, so yep. you don't have to manually set that. All right. Yep, so I am adding some companies, and maybe you can tell me if I'm doing it right. Absolutely. Yeah. Did you want to? Did you want to screen share, or do you want to? Do you want me to look at that page, or? Um, okay, so if you go to the outreach page, which you're looking at. Oh, yeah, I can see you've added a few. Um, okay. Yeah. So I can. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> um, Love me some is this like a copyright issue or something? Should I, should I change it? No, it's great. <laughs> uh, okay, so I've added a couple of companies that might be interested in our product. Perfect. And then I've identified individuals who. Um, okay, so in order for me to add a new individual, I can click through to here. Yep, you can either, you can click right into the contact and then uh, choose the plus beside the appropriate person. Got it. And I know this is a silly question. Where do I add new people? Uh, yep, our contacts list. Is is this is actually the sales CRM? So anywhere in here, you could add. You, you like, can also type in the in the related contact field, and it'll give you an option to create a new person. At the oh, moment. I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't exist. There you go. And then if you <laughs> yes. click in, if you click into fancy person and Jean Luc, you should be able to use our. Um, so probably Marie, our regular template would create them as a lead so new customer template yep so assuming that that one okay that one doesn't have the lead selected um so let's add lead into our statuses here and update and then, the template to automatically mm -hmm. select those okay so now if i click into i can say status lead Hey, Oase, are you aware if it's possible to create from a template yet in via the API? Um, I'd have to follow up on that, Ben. Do you can you 
can you clarify what you mean by that? Is it so? Let's say that let's say that Jay identifies a lead in some other platform, and we autom like for example, we just did a three step process to type in a name to uh, create a new item, and then we clicked the template to turn them into a lead, so that they can right. actually start tracking them. Can we do all those steps in one via the API? Yeah, um, I can follow up with more detailed information, but creating a new record with pre-populated values should be possible. Mm -hmm. I'll follow up on, it's gonna be related to the integration if you're sending from Gmail and then they're creating a new record. Right. I might even turn that into a page. We'll just tuck that away. Okay, cool. So you got your maybe pains and gains here. Now I wish I had access to the space. I want to be playing at the same time. <laughs> yeah, we should add you as a, as so a guest. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like me to? Yeah, let's... Uh, why don't you put your put your email in the moderators uh, mm. group there, Ben, and uh, we can invite you into this page. Give you access. Okay, cool. So you talked about gamifying stuff. So I think probably doing something by a filter by week. Uh, and again, this might be something where like you might want to make a copy of this view on your own task dashboard or something like that, where the, the default view is your weekly view, like show me the weekly score. That's totally something that we can do. So I'm going to say uh, closed is within the past week. So right now, neither of you have uh, closed any clients yet, but it's there waiting for you to, uh, if you do add a close date of this week, that should show up in this board view in the correct. And I guess we'll want to decide if we want to do board view by dropdown or by um, the relation, right, Ben? Mm -hmm. So we could do a group by... So can you remind me again the pros and cons of using it via uh, a dropdown versus a separate database? One of the interesting things that you can do with doing it as a relational database is that you will start to see all of the names of the people underqualified here. So mm -hmm. um, let me see. I'm just I'm going to copy this link again and just paste it here just to show you. I think a table view might be a little bit easier to view this in. Um, so here you can start to see a list of different people in these different statuses. So I could say, um, again, if you want to like ass assign, assign people to your assistant or whatnot, you can say like, oh, wow, we've got like 50 people that are qualified that we haven't reached out to yet, right? It kind of gives you an idea of how many people are in each of these categories. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's a little bit easier than say... Um, Could I use groups to do the same thing if I was using the drop down? Yeah. Um, yeah, like, how, like, tell me a little bit how you prefer to visualize this information, because we can definitely, you know, make it work however your your brain sort of thinks of this and however you guys have been tracking it. Yeah, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, I think the most useful thing is for us to be able to say who are all the people who are qualified so that we know that these are the folks who we need to take some action on. No. Yeah, no, no, it's, um, I don't know if the relation is as helpful for them, Ben. I'm curious if you if you have strong opinions otherwise versus doing this as a... For the weekly stuff? Well, even just for the, the status, you know, should the status be a single select or relation? It's a fundamentally different functionality and, you know, based on how Jay wants to use it. I don't know if you have strong feelings about like why I mean, are you doing it? For, 
I suggested the relation because of the documentation aspect, but mm. if it's if you want to keep it simple, for sure, the 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 single select is the simplest way to do this. Right. Um, I like that. I like the ability for systems to be self-documenting, so that they, you know, the the system itself contains the documentation versus having a separate documentation area that describes, you know, how to right. do things. Um, so you could, you know, with that status thing, you could create a whole page that rolls up and describes, you know, the whole the whole process for for new people coming through. So that would be my preference. But again, it's interesting. Uh, that's what's great about Notion is it it really is up to you. You know, you can do whatever and, you and want. And Ben, Murray, can I ask a question to Ben real quick? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of um, course. I love that point, Ben. Can you elaborate more on a, an, a system that creates information internally? I think I know what you mean, but maybe give me the one-on-one -on, -one on what you mean by that. Yeah, so like, so, so we have this idea of, like, like I, I said it earlier, that we started off with the, the default Notion template has this status field that um, is lead, qualified, and so on and so forth. And for somebody coming into the, your your organization, I'm looking at this thing, and perhaps I'm a high level senior salesperson, and I already know all these terms. I know exactly what that means. I know exactly what I'm doing, and I know the ex the specific steps that uh, that I'm going to take to do that work. Um, for a new employee, like say a junior employee or somebody that is training on the specifics of say Hot Swaps uh, sales funnel because it might be very unique to the application you know there's a lot of technology apps and startups that they're going after customers in really weird places and communities and things like that so for example our company okie dokie we have a notion mastery community we have we have lots of onboarding documentation and specific like when we're doing sales outreach it's very specific to how how are people using notion and so on and so forth so by putting the the status in a, a separate page and grouping on that, I can actually click on that status and see, in do like documentation wise, how to perform that that specific, what I should be doing at that step. So general overview, and then uh, as I mentioned earlier, earlier you can further extend that, and have have an internal database that matches that status that could have processes within that status if it's an incredibly complex process, you know, but some, sometimes it's just like, write the damn email. It's not a super complex, <laughs> <Yeah>. you know? <laughs> yeah, like, I love that. It's like the playbooks and everything is in one place where you're actually executing. You have the knowledge to execute al alongside you. It's like immediate mm -hmm. access. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. Thanks for clarifying. And, mm -hmm. And just adding on, you know, what Ben said. So let's say there's a process to decide if someone's qualified, and we've we've sort of put it in here, just as as the sort of documentation. Here are the people that are in that status, and we can have a little summary description of like, remember, qualified applicants are people that are customer service, this or that, you know, and you can kind of define it. So now, when I jump into one of these people, there's a roll up here that pulls in that description, right? So because they are qualified, there's like a little note there that can pop up automatically. So if someone's a closed person too, you can say, hey, don't forget to follow up with this person within like 10 days. And so just it kind of gives you another ability to kind of standardize on those notes that you might send for yourself. So rollups are kind of a neat way to just pull in data that lives somewhere else. And that's just like one really simple example. So then for this um, setup, are we thinking that we want to use this approach of, of using um, a, a relation to describe different statuses rather than a rather than a drop down? I think so. Okay. But I mean, part of this too, I think once we put it in your hands and you kind of play with it, uh, yeah. it's not it's not difficult to kind of switch back and say, no, actually, we need a sort of simplified status view. So yeah. what I might do for now, just to uh, reduce confusion is I might even uh, delete the single select. Uh, okay property here. And again, you can always bring it back if you're like, nah, that's that's not super helpful. Yeah. Um, and we'll we'll default to that as part of our um, so, board view here. Marie, something, something I've been thinking as you're building, I, I'd switched, um, if you go back to the status by team member board, I started putting some data in so that we can actually see. Um, so I switched to the other one, not the weekly one. And mm -hmm. then I think we're going to need to group by uh, the status uh, column now because the other one's been deleted. So this one's this one's by the relation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. And you're saying and that then, we should switch the other one here? Uh, let's see here. Well, the other one I think should be a table. I don't think you need a board view for showing stats. I think the table view might make more sense for showing, you know, like, you know, the person's name and the and how many were closed counted up. Oh, the weekly one you think should be a table? Yeah, I think so. Let's try it. Well, let's make a we'll duplicate, make a new one. Yeah, I think you'll probably want a, a range of different views just to kind of you know visualize the information in different ways. So yeah, this is um, one easy way where you can roll up the counts here too. And we can say um, closed within the past week. And even, you know, status is possibly, we could say status is closed, right? So there's none that are marked as status closed yet, so they won't show up here. But that's uh, one way to do that by weekly. And we can also yeah, hide it. We don't necessarily need all of these different uh, details here. If this one's just kind of the scoring one, <laughs> maybe the estimated value could be, could be a good one to do a sum of, right? So you can kind of compare with your team member. You're like, well, yeah, well, I brought in this much this week and uh, mm -hmm. you get the honor of that. Last contact, last edited, you can hide that. Um, notes too, like I think uh, notes are really great to add here. Even my assumption is you're still going to be adding people, you know, notes about folks in the body of their entry, but it's nice sometimes to just have a little note here where this is kind of like the most recent thing. So if you're, you know, co-founders just scanning it, it could be like, oh, I left a note that I'm going to send them an email by the end of the week or something like that. I think it's good to have that in here just as kind of the most recent note to yourself. And then of course, just in the body, you're going to have that running running list of just, um, I might even do something like, um, whether it's toggles, but using date stamps. So just say like now, at now, uh, emailed, client this thing. Yep. And then the next time you're adding a note, it's above, right? So then it's like, uh, at tomorrow, did other thing, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And so over time, you can kind of see a reverse chronological list of just sort of things that you did, links that you sent, you can you can kind of have it all in here. And then just mm -hmm. maybe make a, a little note of like, something that you might want to uh, have your co-founder be able to quickly see at a glance or something like that. So you got a lot of options here. And you can, of course, always hide any of these properties. Like maybe you don't always want these visible, like you just want the little snapshot. It's it's kind of up to you how much you you want to really have on the person when you're, you know, at the point that you're having a, a contact a call with them. Got it. That makes sense. Oh my gosh, we're coming up on the time. <laughs> how did that happen? Oh. That's great. Um, and uh, Marie, Jay, and, and Ben, maybe it's good if we just like recap sort of what we covered, because you covered a lot of concepts. I mean, we've essentially built like a pretty strong and powerful CRM tool. It's not Salesforce, but it's CRM and Notion, and that's pretty powerful already. So would love, um, Marie, because you because you went through so much of it, maybe like the meta level, like summary of the, at least the main things that you would need to set something up that if you were trying to create this for your own team, um, what are the things to keep in mind, um, features or, or, or functionality that we should be paying attention to when we build this for ourselves and our own teams? Yeah, I mean, I obviously I'm I'm a fan of the relational databases. So separating out, you know, companies. So companies have their own set of data. Your contacts themselves, each individual person is is in your sales CRM. The status one is kind of a new one that we introduced today, but it does give you a lot of opportunity to create, uh, and I can see Ben added some notes here too, like what does it mean to qualify a lead? It, it gives you a chance to kind of mix your documentation alongside your actual statuses. It's kind of an interesting new use case that's that's kind of come out of uh, these new grouping changes. Um, I think also building in your scripts and your templates into the contact itself is another really amazing one. Like there's, we didn't even scratch the surface with actually building out the template here, but I think as much as possible, build and bake your process into the contact itself. So all you have to do is open up one person's, you know, identity, all their information is there, all of your steps and check boxes that need to happen in here. Uh, everything is baked in here and, uh, you know, add, add those extra fields and extra notes that you need for yourself based on your company's needs. Don't uh, 
feel like you have to use the defaults that are there. If you want to have six different date properties, because that makes sense for you, I think it's really important to just customize it and make it work for, for your specific company's needs. Um, ben, I don't know if you want to add, add some stuff onto that, but those are some of the, the things I would think to. No, I think that was a great summary. Um, I think there's a couple good questions. Yep. Um, like one of them, I, th I like this one. How would you glean insights as to how you converted some leads qualified to call to converted based on profiles grouping? Um, oh, let me just let my dog out. So I think, um, <laughs> be quiet. Um, I think, uh, yeah, like I would say the way that you added the pains and gains uh, might be, the gains might be where you actually qualify, like, you know, this was a thing that, that that triggered them to be like, oh, I'll check this out or so on and so forth. So it doesn't necessarily always need to be a, a bad thing, um, hence the gains. Um, and that way you could really like, you know, create some rollups to show some commonalities and what, what was converting and what's not. Um, and then, you know, you can always take notes and add that to the calendar based on that and so on and so forth. And what I've just done here, Jay, is I've added a roll up here for frequency, and then I'm going to sort this by frequency. And that way, uh, the more that you add those pains and gains and connect them up with people, you're actually going to be able to sort this uh, by frequency Got it. descending. And so you'll you'll always kind of see those those top ones, which I think can it, I think it just adds so much richer data. You can really start to see, especially from a product development standpoint, you can really see like, oh, wow, we keep hearing this thing mentioned over and over again. So if one of your key, you know, things to do as part of your CRM, like as soon as you finish a call with somebody would be to, uh, you could even have a little note where it's like, make sure to add, like, add pains and gains, you know, and that can be one of your, uh, you can rename it, of course, and kind of, you know, do it the way that you want to do it. but baking that into the template itself where it's like remember to add this once you've mm -hmm. finished this stage do this and have all of that right there you can even tuck it into a toggle if you want so that you can do free form taking notes while you're in a session with someone but then afterwards you kind of remember to to make those connections and uh speed it up as, as much as possible and how did you do that how did you make it uh do that frequency column I, I wasn't so the, the yeah, sorry, I know I zipped through this. Um, so it's a roll up property. And with a roll up, what you do is you have to choose a relation. There's only one relation here that I've made, which is contacts. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just choosing the uh, basically it's allowing you to choose any of the properties that exist in contacts. I'm just saying choose the name, but mm -hmm. I want to do a count instead of show original. If Got I it. said show original, it's going to show the contact. Oh. Right. But I just want to okay. show the sum here. Count all. And then there's a frequency of two. Yeah, I just added. I just added Worf to the pain. He's Got it. really aggravated by Google Docs. <laughs> <laughs> but that that can be a really handy one. So if you have a couple common things that you know you want to track, maybe there is a tools database that's separate from the pains and gains. It can really start to give these rich profiles to your contacts. And again, if you want to roll any of those up into other databases to make it handy, so that. If I'm coming in at the company level, I want a list of the pains and gains. You can see that automatically. So you have a lot of options in terms of how you, uh, you know, pull in that data. That makes sense. And it, that's actually useful so that we know what direction to take the product, right? So if we talk to exactly. 50 customers and most of them are saying one specific pain, then we know, um, hey, maybe we should build that feature. Yeah, maybe there's a little, maybe there's a little notes here too, right? Where yourself and your... Um, Co-founder can just be like, "Ooh, remember to remember to build a feature on, on that sort of thing," and you can start to have your own opportunities and and solution database. Um, and Maria, I would even add that um, actually at Notion, when users submit feedback, whether it's through all our inbound channels, the ultimate source truth for us is a database just like this, not a CRM per se, but a database that aggregates how many times you've seen a specific feedback mm -hmm. tag. So if it's like um, I want better security permissions for databases. We'll tag that as security permissions as the meta level tag in, in yeah. the tech column you have. And then just can get a quick count of like how many feedback um, requests have been submitted for a given theme. And then we can dive deeper. So the, the product and the design team use that heavily and the customer facing teams use it as like the information aggregation and then shares it with um, 
product. Oh yeah, and uh, Zoe just shared the article of how we use Notion, and I'm sure the <laughs> feedback part is is in there, and just reminded me of that's exactly how we do it. Awesome. I love yeah, how again. Star Trek fans have come out of the woodwork in the chat here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was mostly alone. Uh, no. Yeah, there's a lot. That's awesome. You are not alone. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I, I know we're only sort of scratching the surface here too. And I think once you start to import some of your data in there and you start to kind of assign these different properties, uh, you know, there might be some tweaks that you'll want to make there. Mm -hmm. But I do think, um, I do think doing this by, doing the status by, uh, relation is, is kind of an interesting interesting possibility there. So I'm very curious about uh, how it ends up working out for you. So definitely definitely report back. I want to hear kind yeah. of how it's working. And I know it, it's a little bit of a learning curve as you're uh, moving your data around and such. So um, yeah, I mean, I think one of the interesting things here is like there are a lot of features that I like, I know how to use Notion at, at a basic level. And I knew that these rollups and things existed because maybe I read a blog post or something like that. Um, but at least, but like now I have, uh, some examples of these being used that I could go in and, and tweak and modify. Um, so that is actually just really helpful for me. Um, so I, so I appreciate that. And uh, I want to make sure we have some time for questions. Yeah. We have about eight minutes left. Throw your questions in the chat or in the questions tab in, in the, in the tool here. Um, We'll try to answer them. Ben, did you see any that you wanted to surface? Um, let's see. No, no specific ones in the. There was somebody asking for a demo for Notion to be used in a design and manufacturing envir environment. Environment. Um, I think you know for Notion for the hot seats folks, OAs and Zoe, uh, they are looking for obviously for startups that are interested in coming on the hot seats thing. So if you are in a in a you know in that environment in that environment then you should probably reach out to them because we could maybe host you sometime is it possible to identify duplicate contacts uh yeah you could theoretically search uh you could use a daily automation to search um you know via zapier or automate um there's nothing built into notion that identifies um duplicates uh, but typically, I usually find duplicates in our systems when I'm attaching something and I see, oh, the two names came up the same. Um, so when you're searching for someone, it'll be really obvious when you're linking. And Jay, do you feel comfortable doing import as well? Like if, uh, you know, if I send, send you off into the ether, are you, do you feel comfortable to kind of do the import into this sales CRM of, of people that you already have? Or do, maybe do you plan to start from scratch or? Would you mind briefly showing me the, the buttons that I would click in order to do a, like a CSV import? Yeah, so I would open this as a page. Um, and in the top right, I think you can say, yeah, merge with CSV. Now, the mm -hmm. one thing to be aware of is that your fields do need to be named exactly the same as they would be in your CSV file. I might even uh, delete any extraneous properties or anything that you don't want to have and uh, just make sure that those line up pretty closely. And then, of course, you can always do batch edit. So let's say um, you want to highlight all of these and update a calendar date. You can absolutely do that here. Right, so you can batch update properties if need be, but uh, just make sure that those headers are are pretty accurate when you're doing that import. Okay, and then we can go back and that makes sense here. to me. Yeah, I know some sometimes there can be some funny business going on with with imports. It, it can take a bit to to kind of figure that out. Sure. Um, th there was a really good question about uh, visualizing data in charts or graphs from tables and Ooh. groupings. Um, so there's lots of ways in Notion to visualize in tables. Uh, there are a couple interesting add-on products right now. Uh, there's one called Custom Blocks, which is at customblocks.io, which allows you to connect a page. Uh, and you're able to, in uh, using a language called Mustache, write uh, visual, uh, you know, write your own ex basically write your own visualizers for your Notion data. So you can connect a single page or a table and that way you can create graphs and things like that. And 
basically it works like you just embed it from custom blocks. So you do all your development on the custom block side and then you embed it in Notion. So it's a pretty new product. Um, I've been interested in checking it out, but there's lots of uh, lots of cool little products popping up around Notion because the API has now given us the ability to work with our data, which is really nice. Um, personally, I'm hoping that Notion builds that into their product where we can uh, build our own components with our data. That would be really exciting. Mm -hmm. A girl can dream. She sure can. <laughs> cool. Let's see here. Yeah, what's nice too, um, Jay, is even in this view here, you can look at lead, you can look at qualified, and even just click on the name qualified, and it just pops up the, oh, yeah, this is what makes for a qualified lead. Remember, X, Y, Z. I mean, you know this just because you're comfortable, but it's just a neat way that you can kind of, as a, modal window, you can kind of pop up any of these, um, you can put yeah. a little GIF in there to cel celebrate. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, and I think that's also useful if we look back at someone and say, hey, what, why did we put them in this bucket again? What was our criteria for doing that? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, th this was the checklist that we went through, and this is how we, how we got them into that status. This is great. Um... No, wait, maybe there's some more questions. If there are no questions, um, I think we can end here. Is there anything else that um, Jay or Marie or Ben, you all wanted to share? I no, mean, sir. I think we've gone through a much more, honestly, a much more comprehensive use case than I was anticipating we would be able to oh, get. Good. Um, yeah, same here, Jay. <laughs> and I, I feel like I kind of feel like for the first time, like maybe I can start getting rid of some of those Google Docs and, and consolidating into something that's useful. And this is something that seemed really hopeless for a long time. Um, so very grateful for, for both of you for helping walk me through that um, and fun. getting me set up. That was fun. Yeah, thanks for, for being brave and, and being in the hot seat. And uh, just a quick tip on that too, is like if you're in that, that middle ground between tools, like you're still kind of in Google Docs and in Notion, you might want to add another property to the CRM profile that could say Google Doc, and that you could just include those links in there just as a transitional period too, yeah. while you're kind of getting used to using the Notion template. So just, just so that at least Notion's still your central source of truth for uh, LinkedIn accounts and Google Docs and that sort of thing. Got it, that makes sense. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, oh. I think we are going to end it here. It's a great note to end on. Uh, just as a reminder, we'll be doing another one of these on November 3rd, 11-3. Um, and uh, Zoe shared the invite to that. So if you want to share that with awesome. other people or attend the next one, it'll be with another founder. Um, so super excited. Jay, thank you so much. And thank you, Marie and Ben. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, it was great. Yeah, thanks, thanks Jay. Attending. Keep us awesome. posted on, on how it goes, Jay. And just as a reminder, too, you can copy and paste the link to any of those individual databases. So if you want to make your own dashboard for yourself or you are just even just looking at the pains and gains or just looking at your own CRM, you can absolutely paste those databases inside of other pages and kind of manipulate that data to show just what you need to see. Got it. Cool. Awesome. Thank, Thank you so everybody. much. Yep. Thanks, everyone. Bye.